Hi, my name is Kai Yuzheng. I'm a PhD student at Brown University. Today, I'm presenting our work titled "Spatial Language Understanding for Object Search in Partially Observed City Scale Environments." Imagine the following scenario: You are at an amusement park, and it is very hot. Thinking of getting some ice cream, you go up to a passerby and ask, "Where is the ice cream truck?" The passerby responded, "It is behind the ticket booth." You then go to the map of the amusement park, and you locate the ticket booth, and then you may infer based on the context a frame of reference for behind. You are able to do this despite behind being subjective to the passerby. Then you infer a region that satisfies this description, and most importantly, you then proceed to search for the ice cream truck. And likely you'll find it. If instead of you, a robot is tasked to search for an object and is faced with the same situation, we believe that having the ability to understand spatial language provided by a human not only makes use of the prior knowledge possessed by the human, resulting in better task performance, but also reduces the barrier of interfacing with the human. However, Doing so is challenging because humans produce diverse spatial language phrases based on their subjective observations and experience of the environment, as well as their knowledge of the target locations, and none of this is available to the robot. Additionally, since robots may be deployed in different environments, it must be able to generalize its ability to understand spatial language across environments. Here we provide a more precise illustration of the problem studied in our work that involve these challenges. A drone is tasked to search for a target object, such as a green car, in an urban area, represented as a discretized 2D map of landmarks. Here we simplify the illustration of the robot and the target. The robot is equipped with the map and landmark locations. And it can detect the target using its onboard, possibly noisy sensor. However, it begins with no knowledge of the target location, and that its sensor has a limited field of view, covering a region substantially smaller than the search space. Direct searching is therefore difficult and inefficient. Similar to the passerby in the ice cream truck scenario. A human with knowledge of the target location provides a natural language description to the robot. For example, the green car is behind the Velvet Dog Club. It is crucial to make use of this information to improve search performance. However, as mentioned before, human produces diverse spatial language based on their observation of the environment and knowledge of the target locations. Yet, none of these factors is available to the robot. To overcome these challenges, we propose spatial language object-oriented PalmDP, or SLOOP, in which we represent spatial language as stochastic observations and integrate this information into the robot's belief. Then the robot proceeds with the search by producing a policy to the PalmDP. Object-oriented PalmDP, or OO PalmDP. Is a decision-making framework suitable for modeling tasks involving objects in human environments that involve partial observability of the object's attributes. We use this to model the object search problem. Sloop essentially augments the observation space of an OO PalmDP with spatial language. To actually treat the diverse spatial language as a form of observation. We first parse the language into an intermediate representation of figure, spatial relation, and ground. In general, we represent a spatial language by a set of such tuples. We used an off-the-shelf learned model for dependency parsing and noun phrase identification. Then we identify such tuples on the dependency parse tree by finding paths between figures and grounds. Then, to interpret ambiguous context-dependent prepositions such as behind, we extract an egocentric representation of the context centered at the reference landmark, as in 28 by 28 grayscale image. In this representation, the reference landmark in the spatial language 
and surrounding landmarks and streets are highlighted differently with different brightness. This image is taken as input to a convolutional neural network, which is trained to predict an angle of the frame of reference corresponding to its spatial relation. The frame of reference is represented as a 2D vector originated at the center of mass of the reference landmark. Then the predicted frame of reference is transformed back into map coordinates. And then a Gaussian-based distribution is computed based on the frame of reference vector, the semantics of the spatial relation, and the geometry of the landmark. We compare our approach to a keyword-based model used in previous work that assigns a uniform probability over the reference landmark and does not interpret spatial relations. Here is a qualitative example to demonstrate the search policy under different language understanding models. To actually evaluate our approach, we first collected maps from areas of five different cities from OpenStreetMap. Each map covers an area of about 40,000 square meters. Then we used Amazon Mechanical Turk to collect spatial language descriptions, and we used a custom tool to annotate frame of reference of spatial prepositions, including front, behind, left, and right. Here is the frequency of different spatial prepositions in our dataset. In total, we collected 1,521 spatial language descriptions, each describing the locations of two objects, and annotated 273 frame of references. For evaluation, we randomly select 20 spatial language descriptions per city, resulting in 200 search trials in total. During one search trial, the agent can perform a maximum of 200 steps. We apply cross-validation, where we train the frame of reference prediction model in four cities and apply it for the search trials in the remaining city, for all possible combinations. Shown here is our main result. It shows the number of successful search trials in the y-axis versus the maximum number of search steps in the x-axis. For example, under uniform belief, roughly 40 search trials are successful under 50 steps, and about 75 successful trials under 100 steps. Informed is an upper bound where the agent knows the location of the target with small Gaussian noise. Keyword significantly improves the uniform with steeper slope and higher total completion. Roughly 150 trials are completed within 100 steps. Our spatial language understanding models does not depend on our particular parser method. Therefore, we also report object search performance on manually annotated language descriptions. Using annotated language brings small improvement to the keyword baseline. Sloop outperforms both automatically parsed and annotated keyword baselines, indicating the benefit of interpreting spatial language using our approach. It leads to successful search in roughly 20 additional trials compared to the keyword baselines within 100 steps. If the spatial language is parsed correctly, our method can achieve faster and more successful search results. Here we demonstrate our approach on AirSim, a realistic drone simulator in a neighborhood environment. The given spatial language description is the red car is behind Jeffrey's house around Renee's house. The robot is able to infer a distribution of the target location and then search back and forth to find it. To sum up, we proposed Spatial Language Object-Oriented PompDP, a framework that integrates natural spatial language provided by a human into the PompDP decision-making process. And we applied this framework to object search in city-scale environments. Finally, I'd like to thank my collaborators and thank you for your attention.